Next question is from Audrey Smith, 19. What are your thoughts on psychedelics? Oh, gosh. Oh, yeah. Psychedelics. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it seems that, that this hasn't been a, as big of a conversation in our space. Like, I don't know. Like, it for a while, there was huge, right? It, it was like everybody was doing these retreats and <laughs> and, and having these, like, uh, totally uh, crazy epiphanies that they were coming back with. And now, all of a sudden, uh, it's not as much uh, in the news. I think that we... You know, okay, I'm going to speak for us, so you guys can correct me if you disagree. But I, I, I feel like, for the most part, uh, used responsibly, um, we've been pretty pro with the stuff that's coming out around psychedelics. Now, I think that we took a stance early on to not talk about it because we were annoyed yeah. by the fitness space. I felt like, you know, we were, what, four years ago, maybe more, when we had... Uh, Stephen Kotler on the on the show. We had Jamie uh, Jamie Wheel on the on the show, which wrote Stealing Fire and Rise of Superman, mm -hmm. which they talk about the use of microdosing and psychedelics and inside the there. Flow state. Yeah, so I, I think we we're we're all very fascinated with the research that's around that, and think used in the right environment can be an incredible tool. But like any other tool, can also be abused. Yeah. And what we saw in the fitness space around the same time that we were kind of reading and going through all this is just, it became this trendy hip thing to go get high and, you know, yeah. bang hella girls and do, and like get everybody uh, on psychedelics just and retreats. Them and and yeah. then trying to, to wrap in spiritualism on top of that, yes. which it, that's all we saw. But yeah, there's, there is a lot of value in them and there's, they're, they're powerful tools and, and it's cool to see what they're doing in terms of like uh, psilocybin and some of the research there where they're actually helping uh brain injuries and and ways to to address yeah. things like that and, and also to treat you, you know psych uh, uh you know like psychiatric psychiatric disorders, disorders. yeah Thank you. yeah no it's uh, the the research on psychedelics continues to come out and it's remarkable but here's what's very clear they need to be really respected, like very, very respected. I think because they've been so illegal for so long, which was stupid. This was a dumb policy by the U.S. government. By the way, the U.S. government scheduled drugs specifically to go after the counterculture. And targeting the hippies. Yes. The 60s and 70s, they were counterculture protesting the war. It was a big deal. And they said, how can we throw these people in jail for expressing their, their liberty of protesting? I know. Let's make the drugs they use the most illegal. So if you look at the scheduling of drugs, the, the, the worst punishments federally were for like marijuana, mushrooms, LSD, right? Which, and by the way, those are all tend to be the least addictive and safest in terms of physical potential effects, right? You know, other drugs like cocaine and yeah. whatnot can be way more dangerous further down uh, the scheduling. But anyway, what that did, which, which was terrible, the side effect of that is because they were scheduled so illegal, there were no studies done on them. You had a lot of studies that were done in the 60s, early 60s, then and they were scheduled as super illegal, done. And so the problem is in American psyche is we view we viewed psychedelics either as, oh my God, super scary, or oh, it's no big deal, they're super fun. This is what I did when I was a hippie or when I was hanging out. And it's this is so wrong. They're very, so far the research is very clear. They're ve they can be very effective to treat certain uh, psychiatric disorders, depression, post-traumatic stress disorder. So crazy. It, the stat, I believe, is like 80 or 90% of all- Cure like, rate. Yeah. It's crazy. After How, one visit, I think. Yes, but here's the thing. It's done with a therapist who's an expert in the right environment and the person is being closely monitored. These aren't people doing it in the field with their friends or at a rave or at some music festival. Pink Floyd concert. Because yeah. something this powerful that can, that can po potentially so help solve post-traumatic stress can also cause it. There's been ca many cases of people giving themselves post-traumatic stress from taking too much mushrooms or acid and it, it causing problems. So it needs to be respected, but the science is remarkable. And, and I'll, I've said this early in the podcast, I'll say it again. I think that we're going to see psychiatric medical breakthroughs in the next, you know, 20 to 30 years that are going to they're going to be complete breakthroughs. They're going to blow away anything that we've done in terms of antidepressants or any other treatments. It's going to be crazy. Now, help me help me understand the science a little bit about this cuz if I understand this correctly, the reason why it's it is so beneficial for these types of clients is and what happens right when you when you when you've had trauma in your life is you can't 
get away from that trauma. It keeps repeating in your brain, repeating in your brain. And one of the things that the, the, the psilocybin is known for is to open up new pathways in the brain. So you make new connections in the brain. So is that- It's an is, altered state of consciousness. Is that what is happening? Is it's disrupting this, this negative pattern of thinking about the war or thinking about these bad things, the traumatic things that have happened. And then they take the, the psilocybin and then it opens up new pathways for them to- Physiologically, that's what they seem to see is that the brain starts to rewire is what they'll say. But psychologically, so far, the best explanations that I've heard, in, in my opinion, are let's say you were in uh, war and in war you see terrible things. Something happened or you did. This is where it really gets hard. You did something that's terrible that you can't reconcile because you consider yourself a good person. You consider yourself honest. Then you're in war. Some kid is running at you with a grenade. Something terrible, you blow him, you blow him away. And now you can't reconcile that. And the challenge isn't that you relive it necessarily in your head, but rather you can't revisit it to process it. So you, you're so, I can't think of it. I, it can't reconcile it. You avoid it and it causes all these problems. Yeah. And what they're saying psychologically is people will be given either um, MDMA or psilocybin. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm is that they're this super empathetic state of mind where they can go in, relive this terrible thought or this terrible thing that happened, revisit it and process it. They actually find the will to process it through and it can be very challenging, but they're able to process it through because when, when you have unprocessed feelings, that's when shit really gets really hard. So that's the best explanation uh, that I've heard so far. Yeah, I, I mean, I had a, such an, uh, a unique experience with it with uh with katrina so um i convinced her at one point to do a a micro dose with me and uh you know and the intention was we were we were out at the beach and we were going to be in nature spending the whole entire day together and you know at this point we've been together nine nine or ten years somewhere around there uh together so and we have I, i like to think we have a very good strong relationship with communication like her and i talk about everything and if there's ever anything going on with one of us like we don't let it fester we Mm. we we talk about it whatever and there is there's been something in our relationship that has always been really hard for us to see eye to eye on it's just it's one of those things that we've just kind of agreed like oh agree to disagree type of deal and it's something that's really it's really not that big of a deal it's something as small as i have this drive for us to to reach a certain place uh, of success financially and her greatest fear in the relationship was that that will never end for me or that my drive for that is more selfish than it is for us right that it's you know oh you have this thing that goes back to your childhood and you just you want things and you don't you'll never you'll, you'll never stop like you're it. never going to be satisfied that's right that's yeah. right and so that's kind of like her her thing and I, i've tried to explain it a hundred different ways to get her to understand me and that no this is not it and how can you say that after all these years we've been together and every time i tell you i have a plan or this is what i'm trying to do i follow through and then I, you know i move on from it or whatever and we did we had this uh incredible breakthrough where i mean she go, she was all emotional and crying and got me all emotional and crying and uh, she looked at me and I'll never forget the look in her face when she looked me in the eyes and said, like, I understand. Like she goes, I, I understand. And I get it now. Like I, I never, I could never see it before. And it wasn't like she was like, Oh, the shrooms are doing this or like that. It was, we were not even thinking about it. We took a microdose. It was hours earlier. Just a super intense connection. Yeah. We were just, yeah, yeah. we were just having it open. Yeah. Yeah. Having a great conversation. And and we were, we're sharing all kinds of different things. And at that point, not even thinking about what we had done hours earlier. And then it kind of just led down this pathway and got to a place where, and again, we didn't do it with like, Oh, we're going to talk about our problem. Like that wasn't even a conversation anytime recent that we'd had that, but it naturally surfaced that day. And then we went so deep into conversation around it that I felt like we solved something that has been in our, that we have never really saw eye to eye in, in almost 10 years in our relationship. And so that for me, it was, I was forever sold on the power of it. Mm-hmm. Now that being said, I can also, I, I've done it less than, I want to say less than five times, definitely less than 10 times. So somewhere between, you know, three and seven times at the most I've, I've done it. Right. And I think that uh, it's something like anything else that you could easily go down this addictive, even though there doesn't have addictive. You can abuse it really. You can escape. Yeah. Use it to escape. Well, and it was, I, it was an incredible experience. So you, I could see people chasing that experience all the time, but like, so Katrina's family are big, big into like shaman and stuff like that. And what they would say about something like that is 
the real power in these 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 drugs is not the actual experience itself, but it's the work that you do from the, the integration. Experience. Was, That's right. Yeah. So, and what I see a lot of people doing in the fitness space is chasing the experience versus, oh my God, I had this huge breakthrough. Now let me go back and put it put it to work and yeah. and work on it, work on it in my life versus always kind of chasing the high. Yeah, that's you know what that reminds me of. Have you guys ever seen that sculpture? I think it was at Burning Man years ago. But it's a famous sculpture of two adults, it's a man and a woman, and their backs are against each other, and uh -huh. you can tell that they're angry and pissed, and they're like facing away. And but the then on the inside, inside are like reaching for each other. Yeah, on the inside is two children. Oh, that's and what the it is. two children that's right. are trying so hard to yep. to touch each other, and re it reminds me of that. Like you have so yep. much built up that you, when you're trying to talk to your your partner that sometimes it takes just to get out of that just get out of that that space sometimes it means you got to just go somewhere else or you know maybe take a microdose of mushrooms who knows but it's like you get out of your own way you yeah, know what i mean otherwise yeah. it's like you can't get through well yeah and i think that we 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 try to analyze all the time like just in i don't know if it's the prefrontal cortex you know we're just always in that sort of state of mind of like you know rationalizing everything whereas this sort of just like flips the table upside down and it's like oh wow you just kind of think a bit differently see things from a different perspective so i see value in it from that but again like it's it's a very very powerful tool you got to be careful yeah, awesome